a difficult time can be more readily endured if we retain the conviction that our existence holds a purpose a cause to pursue and a goal to achieve assalamu alaikum and greet everyone welcome to our live session titled dealing with infodemics today is saturday 25th of july 2020 and i tania perera would be your host for the day on behalf of the city school paf chapter and powered by the prep plus senior one section it gives me immense pleasure to welcome each one of you for this wonderful session thank you for joining us with collaborative efforts we hope to spread awareness and positivity with our discussions I would also like to highlight that the city school has launched a covid relief package under their banner the city school cares it offers a 100% fee waiver on admissions the registrations are now open and for further details you may log on to their website as well without any hesitation i would firstly like to welcome our reputable and distinguished guests mr mubashir zaidi who is a highly respected and self motivated journalist news manager and journalism trainer with a broad range of exposure in national and international media he has 23 years of experience in the broadcasting field online radio and print media besides a vast experience in this field he has also been supervising dot television english national language channel currently we can see him hosting a very happening talk show called zara hat k on dawn news he has also been associated with bbc los angeles times and hindustan times wow an excellent profile sir welcome to our live interactive session thank you so much for inviting me and i would like to thank uh, ms anam uh, zishan as well for the invite and uh, the city school it is my privilege thank you sir our next guest speaker is none other than the very famous ms nusrat haris who is also associated with the media industry she is a charming anchor person who hosts a famous morning show on ptv subai no moreover she also hosts a relevant sports show that highlights fame chairperson of fpcci committee on electronic media Moreover she is also an executive director of Loxton Young UK Welcome to our webinar ma'am Thank you so much thank you It so is much. indeed a pleasure to have two well known and prominent individuals amongst us The City School PAF chapter extends their gratitude towards you for sparing us your valuable time Before we proceed any further I would like to invite the headmistress of the prep plus senior one section Ms Sobia Rizwan to shed some light on today's webinar Her mic is off, I think. Assalamualaikum, yeah. everyone. Uh, yeah. This is Sobeer Khan, uh, headmistress from PAF chapter. Glad to note that you all could join us for this live session. Now, what is infodemic? In simple words, it's a combination of innovative information during a pandemic situation. Its purpose is to provide a roadmap and devise a successful plan 
on how to go up during these crucial times? Well, being an educationist, it is extremely essential for me to ensure the safety and well-being of our students. And in order to execute this smoothly, I've had to stay updated on the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Positivity, determination, and self-belief are some of the key factors that have helped me to take control of the situation and facilitate my students with positive, thorough, and well-researched information. A school must provide a healthy learning environment with creating awareness that transfers a positive vibe amongst our young learners. Being a leader and also a person who has a strong relationship with public dealings, it is very important to not only stay updated, but to also use this platform to spread awareness and an effective learning environment. Let us hope that even today with this live session of infodemics, we are able to succeed in transferring beneficial and substantial knowledge to our young learners. I would like to express my thankfulness to our guest speakers for sparing us their valuable time. Thank you very much. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Sobia, for those enlightening words. Our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to try just one more time. Well, today's topic is based on infodemics. So what is the origin of this word? It is a combination and blend of information and an epidemic. The purpose is to explore which risks are more susceptible to infodemics and together develop new strategies for the improvement and continuation of a normal life even under a pandemic situation. In simple terms, it means to learn, adapt, accept, and adjust to any ongoing situation with a positive mindset. So that is why we all have gathered here today. That is to discuss about COVID-19 and how we as individuals have learned to adjust with the current scenario. And most importantly, as adults, we need to focus on providing facts based on authenticity, especially for the youth. To start off with our discussion, may I first invite Mr. Mubashir Zedi to tell us how essential is it for the media to play its part in providing clear and authentic news to its viewers. Well, thank you so much. First of all, uh, you said we have to adapt and we have to cope with the situation. Uh, we have also to remember that these kind of pandemics come once in 100 years or once in uh, 90 years, as they say. So uh, we, once uh, this pandemic uh, started in China, it took a World Health Organization two and a half months to declare it as a global pandemic. So everyone was watching what was happening. And uh, when the first came, uh, case came in Pakistan in, uh, on 26th of Feb, uh, everyone was uh, very cautious, very anxious uh, how to deal with the situation. But uh, luckily, we had the example of Iran as well as China with us. So we learned from them. Uh, we um, applied some cautionary tactics like uh, you know, uh, wearing masks, or uh, going forward in March, we had closed down our schools, we had closed down shopping centers, we had closed down markets and banned social, social gatherings. So I think we did all these uh, steps just because uh, we had seen what had happened in China and then Iran and then Europe, because all of that has happened uh, before us when the pandemic hit Pakistan. So media had to uh, take the examples of China, Iran, and Europe and apply it on Pakistan by informing the viewers that these are the uh, precautionary measures because uh, no one had any idea uh, about the disease 
and the vaccine is yet to come even uh, till today so uh, all doctors were advising is uh, to take precautionary measures and um, try to uh, stay indoors try uh, to avoid uh, contact with uh, in a social gathering or try to avoid gatherings even in the office uh, that's why uh, you know we are talking on this software otherwise we could have been in a, a hall so media uh, initially i think played a good part there were confusions as well uh, i could tell you uh, that because it's a global pandemic it hits uh, the world once in 100 years so uh, media was not ready for it so all sorts of fake news were coming in like you know uh, there were desi totcast coming in that aap ye kha lijiye so so you'll uh, avoid uh, covid or you you can do this you can but no none were certain and uh, none, even the doctors weren't certain what to do with it all they were advising is preventive measures so i think media uh, initially was confused like doctors like everyone else but uh, steadily i think uh, we all came on a same platform where media was advising continuously that we should adapt cautious precautionary measures to avoid uh, this pandemic and once the who uh, declared it as a pandemic so i think um, everywhere in the world people started to take it seriously and uh, here in pakistan as well we had seen unprecedented steps and media had been supportive uh, mostly about it because uh, this was not about just um, uh, between any two three political parties it was it was something that could have uh, could destroy uh, the country like it did in uh, us or europe we, have, we had seen hundreds of thousands of people getting affected we had seen hundreds of thousands of deaths happening so i think our performance today as we stand is much better um and thanks to allah and thanks to obviously uh, our doctors we had managed to avoid massive death toll and we have managed to avoid a massive outbreak of the pandemic yes thank you very much there was an uncertainty mr zaidi and i agree with you true and well said all the advice and your precious words that uh, have been used i'm sure that everyone is going to accept and of course listen to whatever you have said because it was quite right miss nusrat how far do you agree yes. with the fact that our pakistani television and film industry should promote the essence of positivity especially for the youth thank you so much for your question um, this question does not re relate to covid-19 situation only the debate and the topic has been put up several times and i think positivity is one word that should be spread irrespectively whether we are in pandemics or whether we are talking about the country or the youth in general uh, obviously nobody would ever say or accept that they would want to spread negativity people are uh, they have been voting for positivity they want positivity all over around and uh, i think media being part of the society also believes in positivity but at the same time you have seen that there are news there are um, certain uh, justins and breaking news and other culture associated to the media channels some uh, some of the customs are followed jointly and collectively whether some uh, media channels and broadcast uh, you know anchors and programs they try to put forward their psychology or th their ideology but at the same time the tv channels the pakistan tv channels and film industry uh, if you talk about film industry film industry is actually trying again to stand up and make a mark although we enjoy it we are trying to support it but the film industry is basically focused towards entertainment if you talk if you are talking about today's world in pakistan but yes this world um, me myself my children and so many people around ourselves our family and friends they are used to of uh, they are 
getting used to of other um, platforms as well, like Netflix and others, and they get acquainted to that kind of a content, which gives them positivity regarding science, regarding diseases, regarding psychological stuff. But at this point in time, if you talk about Pakistani film industry, we are far behind that. We have not developed that taste, and we have not, um, you know, gone into it. Uh, the subjects like these, we think that Pakistani film industry. Uh, has to focus corely uh, uh, towards entertainment. That, that I think, I mean, as a viewer, I could comment on this. Um, apart from that, if you talk about the TV channels, the TV channels are the mixture of different feelings. When you wake up in the morning, you see certain morning shows with different flavor. Some people are being really very positive. Some are being, you know, um, you feel that they are, they, uh, the pandemic doesn't exist even, and they are living in some other world or on some other planet some people are highly negative i didn't want to use this word but sometimes as a viewer you get this feeling that you know this is being negative and we shouldn't do this kind of or we shouldn't have talked about this topic in this way we should have put forward it in a different way in a softer tone so um i could not comment on it collectively that we are being totally positive or we are are being totally negative but yes i think um, everybody of us wants positivity and in these circumstances we want to dig out the positive thing whatever is happening around us or whatever comes up on the television we, we only want to watch positivity we have seen this that people have stopped watching tv people have switched to the gadgets they have started watching other channels. They have started watching, uh, uh, following other forums, which are providing entertainment, which are providing facts, which are providing distinct information. They don't want to see negativity all the time. So when you talk about Pakistani television, I think they should concentrate on the positivity. That's what, that's what we all want. But at the same time, you cannot expect every fact to be positive. So there, there, there will be negativity also, but there is always a uh, way to put it forward, to, to give it to the audience. There is always a way. There is always like Mubashir Zadi Saab is here. His program is loved and liked by so many people because when they talk about different things, they talk with facts and they talk with sense. So people like it and they tend to digest it. They don't get, um, you know, uh, negative about it. They don't get uh, annoying. Uh, they don't get, get aggressive about it. So I think positivity is something which is highly needed, not only in Pakistan, but everywhere, all over the world, not only in profession, not only on the TV channel, but in your home, but in your relationships, but everywhere. And when you talk about media, let's not forget that we are highly um, you know, influenced by social media. Every update you are getting these days is through social media. There are a lot of channels. There are a lot of updates there. There is this government portal, which the other day my son came to me and he told me, see, this is the number of COVID patients now. So, you know, even kids are getting a lot of information. So this is, um, uh, there is so, so much of information. You dig that, the information out. But yes, the overall, um, you know, the overall wish or the overall, overall hope or the overall agenda that we want to acquire is uh, somewhat related to positivity, I think. Quite right, Ms. Nusra. Thank you very much for your in-depth analysis and your honest opinions. Thank you very much. Thank Mr. You. Mubashir, is it not true that through this very media, one minute we hear about an expansive rise in the COVID-19 cases, and then the next day, we witness a sudden decline. Well, Tanya, uh, as I said, that media hadn't seen such kind of thing like the uh, rest of the people for over a hundred years. So they were totally confused. They were like predictions all over uh, by doctors, uh, by uh, doctors of Western countries saying that, uh, you know, uh, millions of people would get infected, millions of people would die. Uh, so media was initially confused. And since uh, we have very little emphasis on research and medical uh, research in particular, so media had no understanding whatsoever about this disease. And when it came, 
initially uh, the talk shows avoided this topic because they know that this is uh, they had to do some research over this they 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 can't do the same political shows that they were doing so uh, initially half of the media channels weren't even uh, discussing it even if it uh, hit pakistan i'm talking about by mid march uh, then that majority of the tv channels were still um, broadcasting shows that would discuss about you know differences between political parties or how imran khan's government is going to um whether it's going to survive or not or whether there will be a governor raj in sin but the problem was that pandemic had hit us by then so journalists had very little understanding even doctors uh, that they had approached were giving contradictory statements um conflicting uh, views so it was it was uh, something uh, wavered all over the place everyone was all over the place uh, just imagine that initially they said that masks were necessary and then uh, or two weeks later they said no you don't need to wear mask and today we are hearing yes we have to uh, you know receive uh, we have to wear mask so there were uh, there were theories coming from western countries that once you have covid you can get reinfected that fact was busted later on but initially doctors were giving and they were doctors from western countries they were medical advisors of the us president and uh, uh, eu so uh, people here even our doctors had very little knowledge about this um, uh, disease or pandemic as you call it so i think uh, slowly and gradually media began to grasp the gravity of the situation then they focused on it uh, and again going into research means that you have to make an effort our media is more interested in making hue and cry over nonsensical things because they they just have to gather couple of conflicting view uh, viewer viewing politicians and have a match between them and th- that would give them rating that would give them uh, talk on social media but when you talk about research when you talk about a pandemic it may not give you the same kind of rating but uh, as a journalist we have duty towards people we have to inform them as you said infodemic in what is infodemic that you have to provide information to the people otherwise people would not uh, listen uh, to what the government would be saying or the authority health authorities would be saying that they have to be very very careful about things in this pandemic initially uh, you know people were like that uh, there was matter of disbelief not in just pakistan it was in europe the whole europe look at what happened in italy in italy people were not really uh, willing to believe that this pandemic which uh, happened in china would hit them similar in us which is now which today this morning had witnessed highest ever recorded uh, corona cases in us which is 73000 the us was uh, president was not willing to believe that it's a pandemic and they say they initially everyone has uh, rubbish it everyone has rejected it saying that you know there's no such thing as pandemic so i think gradually our media did uh understand and try to inform its uh, viewers and by positivity uh, positivity here means survival that if you survive this pandemic yes you have a chance to be positive if you don't obviously then you're dead so it, it, this is something that um, hopefully we won't uh, be reporting for another 90 years or or maybe 50 odd years before another pandemic hits us but that's uh, what happened in the spanish flu in um, early 1920s uh, uh, same is the case of uh, other uh, pandemics that had happened in the past so we have to tell people through the research to help them understand the gravity of the situation and thankfully thankfully i believe that pakistani people did learn uh the students particularly the youth which uh, forms the biggest uh, component of our population i think they they grasped it through social media they had seen the examples of china iran european uh, eu as well as us and i'm glad uh, for the first time i have belief on our 
health system as well, public health system, which has uh, normally been rubbished. So we were. I was talking to the prime minister's advisor the other day on my show, and he also said that. When the uh, pandemic came, we weren't sure whether our hospitals could take care of the uh, such a influx of patients. But luckily, we managed. So it means that uh, we are used to on-job training, and uh, until unless something hits us brutally, we don't sort of uh, we are not shaken. We we don't make an effort. But in this case, I think we did make an effort. Thank you, Mr. Zaidi. Yes, Pakistanis are strong and uh, made of steel, and we are optimistic as well. Uh, there are some questions from the audience as well. Uh, yeah. Do you agree that media has a responsibility for informing and helping educate their audience, not only provide positivity? This is a question from uh, Mrs. Eve Karamat. Um, do I have to well, answer uh, this? Yeah, please do that. <laughs> because uh, they no, did sure. not. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Eve Karamat, thank you so much for the question. I think that uh, we take it uh, our prime responsibility as a media person. I'm saying this. We want to educate people. We want to inform people. But I think the question relates to the discussion earlier that uh, uh, we need to have our own research. We need to dig in the facts. We need to be open and we need to have that sort of freedom through our TV channels, through our state, through our other platforms so that we impart the knowledge base information or we impart that um, kind of uh, information that our audience are craving for. Uh, you see, we, we kind of give information, we kind of have, we, we have different kind of programs, as I have uh, mentioned earlier. And uh, some people find one program very productive and very, you know, they, they think that the host is being really aggressive and he talks in favor of the audience and the people at large and they are digging out the facts and they are just grilling the um, guest and it is very good. You know, you are putting your aggression into the anchor person and then you are feeling satisfied after that fight or after that fight sort of a discussion but some people get annoyed some people doesn't like it and they want to have a factual information they want to have a true information about the topic so uh, the variety of audience has changed the variety of programs has changed the ideology of a media channel has changed you cannot compare dawn tv with geo tv you cannot compare ary and geo you must have seen that meme on social media that if you watch one channel, you feel that the government is going. You feel another channel and you feel that the government is staying. And then you feel the state channel and you think everything is okay. There is no problem at all. So, you know, this is the psychology that we are giving or this is the message that we are giving to our audiences. You cannot only blame one person who's a producer or who's an anchor person or who's a researcher. This is the overall pattern of or the overall psychology of a broadcast channel or, uh, you know, the team or the, uh, or the personnel involved in it. So it comes to you in, in a specific form. But yes, media has this grave responsibility to give information to the people, but this is at the discretion of media and the people who should have editorial um, knowledge and power to edit or to give the information which is necessary, which should not create chaos, which should not create desensitization, which should create, uh, uh, you know, a, a positive, not if, if not a positive, but a better influence uh, on the masses. That's what I feel. That is that kind of information we are all liable to give to our audiences. Well, thank you, Ms. Nusrat. There is another question from uh, Mr. Zishan Tahir. It's a general perception that Pakistani media is exaggerating this COVID-19 situation. You have personally covered hospital situations right now. So what's your take on this? Uh, well, I suppose uh, the question is for uh, Mr. Zaidi. Well, uh, I think uh, exaggerating 
in this case i think exaggeration is good because you have to tell people that something bad really bad has hit you so you have to be preca- uh, preca- you have to take precautions about it and hadn't our people not seen uh, international channels like w- what's happening in china or us or uh, european union i think uh, pictures made all the difference the numbers made all the difference and as i uh, said earlier as well that no one had any idea what that pandemic was all about where it had come from where it would lead even the best of the best in healthcare professionals in the world were confused about it they were just uh, doing their guesswork uh, and there were world leaders who were shooting down those guesswork and giving their own statement so i think there was chaos all over and media had to play a role role and for for once i would support that you know media was uh, exaggerating things exaggerating to uh, to an extent that uh, the danger was immense we already know if someone says that the danger uh, was imminent the, the danger was not only uh, immense but it was imminent as well it was knocking on, on our doors and we had to create some sort of a panic to let people believe that if they don't take precautionary measures they will be hit by this uh, pandemic very hard thank you mr zaidi uh, ms nosrat can morning shows adopt a special way in order to spread a positive vibe a vibe especially during this lockdown period see the number of morning shows has reduced a lot so uh, <laughs> there are only two three morning shows left and i tell you um, morning shows have been different since the start there were entertainment morning shows and there were news morning shows so news morning shows were always inclined towards giving information making informative content and bringing in stuff that relates to people of every age and that could get, give information to the masses and uh, whereas if you uh, talk about the entertainment morning shows you know about that i don't have to comment so i think uh but but when you compare i i uh, want to share something with you because in our meetings at office wherever channel i have worked we always used to compare the ratings of morning shows with shaadi and gana and everything and the ratings of our morning show at the news channel with all the facts talking to a doctor or talking to some other prestigious guest giving information to people and being really serious in the morning every time the shaadi and gana used to beat us if you talk about the ratings so you see um this is very good question and i believe that i have worked uh, in a way that every morning i had lot of stuff i used to read lot of stuff because i wanted to sound knowledgeable about the topic i used to do lot of research my team used to do lot of research we used to have good guests who had command on the subject but um you know along with that if you see the rating of other channels giving you the entertainment content you sometimes feel that is this what our audience want is this mm. how you could actually give a content you are talking about because you see there were programs and there are programs where people actually talk sense and they actually uh, bring up a lot of information for people if you talk about morning shows we have morning shows of that kind as well but the problem remains the same that after some time when you cannot get ratings and when you cannot be um, that uh, bubbly and funny and joyful in the morning you you do not tend to go forward so yes morning shows if they are doing certain things for the enjoyment of people for making it light for the public they should inculcate a few portion or few minutes of information as well and i tell you this was um, uh, these guidelines came from pemra as well few months back in which they asked the morning show anchors to inculcate that kind of information in their shows and which i saw in the enter- on the entertainment channels that they were doing it and uh, they did it for a few days and afterwards they stopped so i think this is another debate that what our audience want when i talk to people like you they say 
that we like your program and we like the sensible topics and we want to hear the educated people but at the same time when you see when you when you uh, see the marketing aspects when you see the business coming to the channel and then you are again you know confused so yes every every anchor anchor would want to sound educated every anchor uh, would want to create that impact i don't see that any anchor would want ki aap uske pe tag kara de ki to sirf shaadiyan karati hai nobody would want that i think i believe that everybody would want ki mera ye naam ho i i should be considered intellectual and i should be considered educated but this is this is not as simple as you're saying it yes the the answer to your question is yes we should do that but how uh, and uh, how much is it possible is again a question for all of us thank you mr nasrat how would you like to inspire everyone with your words of advice mr nasrat what would you like to say to the youth out there um okay during uh, present circumstances i feel that it has uh, brought blessing in disguise i have felt that number of things are changing we are transforming in different ways i have seen for myself as well for my home as well that we have engaged into activities we have taken certain decisions related to business and stuff that we were not thinking about before so yes this pandemic is a situation where you feel the challenges you take the challenges but at the same time i would want to tell the youth that it is i feel that it is opening new doors for our youth it is it is transforming the world in some way or the other i am being part of it my children are being my family is being part of it and i see it and i get surprised but maybe this is allah's way of doing things because he has given us this mushkil and we are waiting for the asani so you know i feel that there there were a lot of things which i wasn't pursuing in my life but when i got this opportunity and when we are getting this opportunity see we are talking with you uh, today on webinar we were not thinking about it previously this is a very small thing but think about it we have open doors we have uh search for the open opportunities and i think uh for the youth there will be coming a lot of opportunities just stay positive being positive is good for yourself as well for your surroundings uh, exchange of positive energy exchange of positive thoughts yes the world is not easy the circumstances are not easy but you have to go through it with your open arms with your open thoughts and just uh go with the flow inshallah the best would come to you thank you very much mr nusrat well we we'll take one last question before moving towards wind up uh i think it is from mr shahnaz ilyas i think the part of media to aware children to take precautions is missing what else has been done to help children being aware of this pandemic especially before eid mr zaidi well yes i think uh, it's a very very good and pertinent question because we had taken this uh, issue up on last eid as well that and we had requested the supreme court and the prime minister and the chief ministers requested them ke khuda ke liye please don't open things too early and uh, but uh, somehow the supreme court ordered that all the shopping centers should be open for eid and people would come out and suddenly we had seen a spike after that and we have we are now witnessing another eid coming and there have been words of caution but there have been uh, we we are uh, witnessing people going out uh, buying animals uh, sacrificial animals uh, which is obviously a religious obligation but there are now other ways as nusrat pointed out that world has changed you don't have to physically go there at the mandi uh, to uh, make yourself vulnerable before the pandemic so you can you can buy things online you can you can do your own stuff or you can give it to a charity without even bringing the sacrificial uh, animal home uh, so uh, things things are changing things are uh, changing as nusrat pointed out things are changing for better yes there is a immense uh, challenge out there but uh, as she said um and i would agree to it that every challenge will bring uh, bring an opportunity with it so uh 
for this eid my word of caution would again be please uh, be careful uh, we have passed the peak but still uh, medical experts are warning that second second spike of uh, the pandemic would hit the world uh, very soon in weeks so if we could uh, continue to uh, apply the same precautionary measures that we did uh, inshallah will come out uh, as a stronger nation as a much more responsible nation and uh, for the world uh, the whole world is watching each uh, and every country uh, their neighbors uh, look at india there there are now uh, more than 15000 cases every day in india we share the same kind of uh, culture we share the same kind of uh, behavior from people yet thankfully we are not affected so much so i think Uh, things have worked for us we have continued to uh, wear mask when we go out uh, particularly children um, uh, and we don't need to unnecessarily go to uh, public places for even eat if it, it is better uh, as a personal opinion that what i did is that i had uh, given this uh, qurbani uh, money to a charity to do it and uh, you know distribute uh, the meat to uh, the deserving rather than uh you know bringing the sacrificial uh, animal home um people may would uh, still like to do it but if they want to do it it's better to order things rather than go to the mandi and expose yourself to the pandemic so if we survive this eid uh in a much uh, better manner than the last eid inshallah uh, the pandemic would be over for us in the weeks to come Thank you, Mr. Zaidi. Yes, thank you so very much for reminding everyone about the SOPs. They really need to be followed by every single individual, and of course, definitely we will be able to cope up with this pandemic, inshallah. What message would you like to give to all the youngsters out there, Mr. Zaidi, especially to your fans? Well, I think, uh, as Nusrat was pointing out, uh, the youngsters. have gone miles ahead of uh, us in terms of technology during this pandemic and i have to now consult my children for uh, the advice on how to use the technology and how to uh, send my message across through social media so i think as they say that zamane ke andaaz badle gaye naya rang hai uh, raaz badle gaye so uh, it says uh, it is an opportunity the future is with obviously uh, the younger generation and they've already taken charge uh, Im- imagine the uh, harvard university would be teaching the same uh, kind of uh, methods to their students which now city school would be teaching like using the same softwares using the same techniques so i think the world is bringing uh, everyone closer because of this pandemic and for youth it's a golden opportunity for not just even youth because once we the world will get out of the pandemic there will be a huge economic crisis worldwide there will be opportunities for online businesses we have already seen uh, jeff bezos is money swallowing up uh, 7 billion dollars in during just the pandemic so imagine the potential of online businesses online uh, education so i think the future uh, we have not gone to the future the future has come to us so i think this is a golden opportunity for students to take this opportunity and prove themselves they have a world of opportunities lying before them due to this uh, online uh, platforms that have given a new facet to the wo- the way we think the way we work and the way we live Thank you Mr Mubashir Zaidi I'm sure everyone's actually listening to whatever you're saying Ladies and gentlemen with that we come to the end of our webinar I'm sure we were able to convey a fruitful message Thank you once again to our guests and everyone who could join us today Your presence was truly encouraging for each one of us I would like to leave everyone It's a thought to ponder upon. Courage doesn't always roar. Sometimes courage is the silent voice 
at the end of the day that says i will try again tomorrow thank you take care and stay safe this is tania perera signing off thank you allah hafiz allah hafiz